episode of Book Reviews and Rants is brought to you by Legend of the Boy. All young boys dream of having superpowers and being able to do great and wondrous things. Legend of the Boy is a science fiction tale that combines the notions of power, might, right, and destiny. It is the tale of a boy, a stranger to this world, who not only has to save the world, but must destroy it in order to move the human race forward. This is not a story for children. Legend of the Boy, an ebook available exclusively at Amazon.com. Hello there, everyone. You might have noticed that today is not Monday, but it is Veterans Day. It's 2014 for those of you who are watching this in the future. I did not post yesterday because I thought more people would be off today. This may or may not be a good idea, but it's what I'm working with. So, welcome to another episode of Book Reviews and Rants. Uh, today, I will be reviewing two books that have nothing to do with one another. Uh, I will be reviewing Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary K. Wolf and A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I will be reviewing, I will be reading from reviews that I have written and already posted elsewhere, but then I will be setting my timer for two minutes so that I can rant either about the reviews, the books themselves, or anything related to the books. It should be fairly interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with Who Framed Roger Rabbit by Gary K. Wolf, and I gave this book five blue books. So this is what I had to say. This is the book that inspired the flick Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I thoroughly enjoyed visualizing this world of humans and tunes created by Gary K. Wolf. After reading this, I can see how this film has influenced other animated series. I only hope that Wolf has gotten some credit for it. I love the way these characters come to life in an entirely different way than was presented in the actual movie. I love the adult appeal to the story and I wouldn't recommend it for children at all. Maybe teens. Who censured Roger Rabbit made me think of a film noir but with feisty mature cartoons as the pivotal players. And to top it all off, it was a super easy read. I would recommend this for anyone with a good sense of humor, and I did not see the ending coming. So that was my original review, and I'm going to get out my handy dandy timer, aka my phone, <laughs> and I'm going to set it for two minutes so that I can rant a bit. Oh, here I go choosing the wrong thing. There's my timer. When I originally wrote and posted this review, um, I hadn't been reviewing very long. I didn't really have my confidence or my voice yet for reviewing, so that's why it's a short review. Um, it may seem like I don't really enjoy the book, even though I say it, but you know I don't really go into detail, and that's because I didn't really know how to. Um, the book was really good. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of the Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie. It's one of the um, kind of better Disney things that you know from that era where they try to try to try some different things and didn't always work out but um, it was really good and um, but I was amazed at how much better the book was and I know that's kind of a, of a cliche to say oh the book was better but it was better in a different way I honestly think if they had tried to pull the movie off the way that the book was written I think it would have worked. It would have been really creative. I won't give it away, but you know, the the tune characters in the book are portrayed in a much different, you know, way that they are in the movie and it was really cool. And the ending really was kind of like I should have picked up on it sooner when you know thinking about it now because they kept alluding to what could have really been going on, but it, it I guess because I was so much thinking about how the movie went I wasn't expecting the ending that appeared in the book. And the ending is one of the reasons why I say, you know, it's not a children's book. Um, it, it is mature, but of course, there were elements of the movie that you could tell they could have gone in some other directions, but, you know, Disney kept it in check. So it was, you know, a good, you know, somewhat, somewhat good family film, you know, just a rabbit's a little risque. So, um, younger kids probably wouldn't get it, but most kids, I think, could get what was going on 
in the Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie. So I definitely like it. Oh, and there's my time. I was going to say a little bit about the Gary K. Wolf issue, but Google it for yourself. All right, so up next, I'm going to share my review of A Discovery of Witches. And this one I gave uh, four purple books. And this review is a little bit longer. So here, let me get started. This is the story of Diana Bishop, a witch who doesn't want to be one. That in, it, that in itself is enough to see that something along the way is going to go wrong. Diana uses magic even when she's not trying to, and she accidentally opens a Pandora's box in the form of an alchemical manuscript. So, of course, all hell breaks loose. Um, in this world where the peoples of the earth include humans, witches, vampires, and demons, though we're not talking falling angels, Diana is left running for her life while trying to figure out who she can trust, including a new seductive vampire that has latched onto her. There is so much about this story that I love, but the few things um, I don't like were enough to keep me from giving it a five-star rating. First off, the plot is pretty good. I mean, I can, can relate to stories that are all about self-identification and purpose. I mean, I even wrote one myself. Um, what Deborah Harkness has done with their discovery of witches, I really wish Stephanie Meyer had done with Twilight. Now, that's not to put down Meyer in any way, but I just prefer movies that are written for adults. If I were a, you know, a yay fanatic, I don't think I would like this book, you know, as much. Uh, this book is beautifully written and very descriptive, but that's actually one of my issues. I love vivid descriptions that pull you into a story and show you what your mind wants to see, and Harkness has done that here, but sometimes I feel like she went too far. I don't think it takes a lot of imagination to figure out how to apply an adhesive strip, and that's a band-aid for those of you I might have lost there. Um, I could also tell that Harkness had done quite a bit of research to prepare for this publication, or she was already a student of pagan um, cultures and practices. Um, I must admit that I found that part to be a little creepy, but I understand that it was necessary to tell the story and make it feel real. Um, with stories like this, I find that there's always an issue when it comes to action versus romance, and I mean like physical action. Um, the premise of the story is ideal for both, but they don't always mesh well. This story, it seems, leans more towards the theme of romance, at least to the extent of portraying a love that surpasses physical desire and is worth literally killing for or dying for. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like that part very much, but I wish there had been more action. When there was an action scene, Harkness did not hold back. She did a very good job of describing blows and blood and reflexes, and that's why I wish there was more. The last and final reason I couldn't give this wonderful book a five-star rating is a little petty, but it tugged at my brain the whole time that I was enjoying the story. So... Um, Harkness only acknowledges four entities in the story, humans, witches, vampires, and demons. Again, not fallen angels. But on at least two occasions, she alludes to the presence or the existence of some type of creature that may shapeshift into something of a wolf or a werewolf. The passages are so small and quick that you may not even notice them at all, and the subject is never addressed. Was this intentional? I don't know, but it bothered me. But it bothered me. Um, this is a good read for adults. Uh, I think it would be a really good read for an adult couple, as long as they're both into kind of dark themes. So that was the original review that I wrote. Let me set my timer, and I will rant a bit, starting now. Okay, so. Um, the last little bit that I mentioned that was one of the reasons I kept me from, um, you know, giving it a five star was whether or not there were or weren't werewolves or whatever. I will go ahead and let you know that this book is part of a series and um, I'll be reading and reviewing other, you know, parts of the series down the road. I'm trying to do things kind of in order. 
So some of the things that bothered me in this book, you may find out later, didn't bother me in some of the other books, or maybe they did, I don't know. But it is part of a series, so I'll address those issues when I get to the other books in the series. Uh, yeah, the whole part about some of the creepiness of the, you know, the um, paganism and all that, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to be an open-minded person and still have your own personal beliefs. And because I do enjoy fiction so much, a lot of times I have to battle with myself to get beyond certain things to just appreciate the story. And I always take that into consideration. I mean, other people have other things that they measure, you know, their, you know, likes and desires and things on. So why not me? So this story, um, I, I love it. The way she did her research. I mean, she told the story that she wanted to tell. And I can respect that, even if a lot of it made me very uncomfortable. But I was able to appreciate the story. This story is not for everyone. You know, there are are people who are very, you know, conservative in their views, um, particularly, you know, Christians. Um, and I, that term is a little, because Christian is a very wide spectrum. You know, some Christians are a little bit more liberal or whatever. But, you know, if you are a fan of fiction, if you can, you know, <clears throat> distinguish between real and make-believe or what you believe is real or make-believe, this type of story should intrigue you. And my time is up! <laughs> <laughs> ah, I gotta stop maybe maybe I should give myself more than two minutes but I don't want to bore you guys with my rants so that was a discovery of witches in my rant so that's all I have for today um, what did you guys think of my reviews any questions what would you have rated these books go ahead and leave your two cents in the comments below because you know I'd love to know Next month, I will be reviewing the titles Ender's Game by Orson Scott, Car Orson Scott Card blah, and uh, Breath of Air by Katie Jennings. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've been kind of trying to review, you know, some traditionally published books along with some, you know, indie published books. And, you know, I try to give, you know, a different feel. You know, some of these books, of course, you've heard of them, you've seen, they're making movies about them and stuff like that. Where some of these books you might be like, oh, that's obscure. And I do that on purpose. So you can follow me on Twitter. You can use the hashtag review rants and you can tell me what you think of next month's titles. Um, and you can share that with me and perhaps you'll have a chance to be featured in my next episode. Uh, next Monday, I'll be posting another episode of Toy Box Movie Reviews. And can't remember what I'm reviewing oh I think that's going to be my unbreakable review yeah that's gonna be interesting uh, but this Saturday I will be um, review no this Saturday I'll be posting an episode of so yeah cards and that's just you know kind of a silly show uh, remember if you are interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a toy box webisode just visit etoythomas.com to learn more about that. So until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying that I believe that authors are just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya!